Microphone specs are parameters that define how the microphone works and how it will sound like. From those, we are interested in the polar pattern, frequency range and response, sensitivity, impedance, self-noise, and clipping level or maximum SPL. The polar pattern is a graphical representation of the microphone sensitivity to signals coming from different angles from the axis. It can be generated by mechanical means, electrical means, or a combination of both, and is generally used to reject unwanted noise. A polar graph is a two-dimensional plot that can specify a point by its distance to the center point and an angle to a fixed direction. When plotting a microphone's polar pattern, we consider the microphone capsule to be the center of the graph. Each concentric circle represents usually 5 dB of level change. The closer to the center, the less sensitive the microphones will be or the less level the microphone will be able to pick up. Also, the microphone's axis will always be at the zero degree line. On top address microphones, this is parallel to the handle of the microphone. On side address microphones, this is perpendicular to the handle on the front side of the microphone. Polar patterns, unless otherwise indicated, are usually done using a one kilohertz tone. Polar patterns can come in two types, omnidirectional and unidirectional. And unidirectional can be cardioid, supercardioid, hypercardioid, bidirectional, etc. There are certain benefits and drawbacks of having unidirectional microphones. They can have increased wind noise, they can have increased popping noise, they are prone to proximity effect, which is an increase in low frequency response at shorter distances to the source. This is caused by the microphone's construction to achieve the directional polar pattern. And they can have increased ambient noise rejection, which allows placing these microphones farther away from the source. The omnidirectional polar pattern, as the name implies, has equal sensitivity from all directions. These microphones have minimum wind noise and minimum popping noise. They don't have proximity effect, and usually they have flat frequency response. These microphones are very common for studio recording and high quality pickup. They are also common for measuring microphones. The cardioid pattern is probably the most common polar pattern. It has a reduced pickup on the rear of the microphone at 180 degrees. It is prone to both proximity effect and popping, so it requires a windscreen. Take note that these microphones usually have a built-in windscreen inside the grill of the microphone. They are very common for live sound application and also for installed applications. The supercardioid polar pattern is narrower than the cardioid pattern. But to create this pattern, a small pickup lobe is created in the back of the microphone. The maximum rejection is now moved to 126 degrees from the front. They are prone to proximity effect and popping, so they also require a windscreen. As with cardioid microphones, usually this windscreen is built inside the grill of the microphone. They are also very common for live sound and installed applications. If we narrow the pattern a little bit more, we get to the hypercardioid polar pattern. As you can see, the back lobe increases in size as the front one gets narrower. In this pattern, the maximum rejection is at 110 degrees from the front. They are also prone to proximity effect and popping, but they're not as common as cardioid and supercardioid microphones these days. Narrowing the pattern a little bit more, we get to the bidirectional pattern, also known as a figure eight. In this pattern, both the front lobe and the back lobe are exactly the same. The maximum rejection is at 90 degrees. This means that the microphone can pick up equally from the front or the back. These are very common on side address microphones used for broadcasting and studio recording using the MS technique. Another pattern is the ultra directional pattern also known as a shortcut microphone. As you can see in the graph, this pattern is very narrow at the front and can have several smaller lobes on the sides and the back of the microphone. They have very good rejection on the sides and the rear and have very poor off-axis frequency response. They're very prone to wind noise, which is why we usually find them inside a windscreen called a Zeppelin. They're very common for movie, TV, video production, and also for field recording. There is a misunderstanding that ultra-directional microphones will bring sounds closer. In reality, the way a shotgun microphone works is equivalent to looking at something through a plastic tube. The distance doesn't change, we just reject anything coming from the sides.